So part A is asking to find the capacitance of this device. So when doing the capacitance, we need two variables. So this formula right here, Q is equal to C delta V. So we need to know the charge and we need to know the potential difference. So looking at this diagram right here, we have this inner circle with a plus Q charge and this outer circle with a minus Q charge. So there's an E field going from positive to negative all throughout this diagram here. What this means is that we can find a potential difference. So we have delta V is equal to ED. So the voltage at this plus Q plate to this minus Q plate, we will have to solve for that. So we'll have delta V is equal to K sub E Q over A minus K E Q over B. So we'll take this and substitute it in right here. So let's do that. So we got Q is equal to C. I'll put in brackets K E Q over A minus K E Q over B. Let's go ahead and clean this up a bit. So after simplifying this expression, we get that the capacitance is equal to A times B divided by the Coulomb constant times A minus B. And that successfully answers part A of the question. So part B is asking to show that as the radius B of the outer sphere approaches infinity, the capacitance approaches the value. We have to prove that it approaches this value a over the Coulomb constant is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught times A. In order to do that, what we need to do is take the limit as B approaches A. So we're going to focus our attention on this delta V right here with this potential difference. So we'll take the limit as B approaches infinity. And what that does, it gets rid of this term right here. So our new delta V value is simply K sub E Q over A. With this new value, we're going to go ahead and make another substitution right here. After we do our substitution, we can simplify this equation by canceling Q on both sides, leaving us with one is equal to C times K E over A. Now we'll rearrange this to solve for C is equal to A over K sub E. Now a over k sub e is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught times a. So we have just successfully proven what part b wanted us to prove. Now if that's a little confusing, k e, if we ha recall that k e, the Coulomb constant, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now if it's 1 over k e, we simply flip this as well, and that'll leave us with 4 pi epsilon naught. Thus, we're able to make the substitution right there and get this alternate form and thus verifying the proof.